Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I am going to be doing a tutorial for complete beginners in Kerbal Space Program Career Mode. Now, Kerbal Space Program, as you know, is a rocket simulator game, but it can also be a physics simulator game. You can play it like Turbo Dismount, you can put it in uh, sandbox mode, build crazy things, fly it around and explode and everything. But a very good way to learn the game is to actually go through career mode. So this is what I'm going to do here. I'm going to step through and I'm not going to play it like you know, a hardcore player like I would play it. I'm going to try and introduce it what things one step at a time. So I will ramble a lot. And if you don't keep up with all the information, that's fine because I'm going to insert a lot of uh, extraneous chit chat. <laughs> and you can always rewind it to uh, figure out what I'm actually saying. So just a pointer, the training missions are actually very useful to show you how to build things and to fly the spacecraft, but don't worry, I will cover all of these things. I'm gonna start a new career mode game. Now, uh, some things to note here, you can pick your flag. For example, uh, you have all these different, you know, squad, squad is a developer incidentally. If you're American, you might want to pick the NASA flag. If you're European, you might want one of these ESA flags. And if you are a Kerbal, you might want the official Kerbal Space Program uh, flag. Uh, I'm gonna pick, oh, I don't know, the OWL aircraft one. Why not? It's got wings on it. Now you can also adjust your difficulty options. Uh, frankly, you don't need to do this because normal is super easy as it is. Re-entry heating, some people might feel they want to turn that off or down because it's a little uh, it's a little interesting, right? Interesting meaning it, what, when you think things are going well, sometimes it'll explode. Uh, I've not had a huge amount of problems and they are definitely working to improve it. So just uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't show you how to build anything that will kill you due to thermal overload. So let's accept the basic options and start. Now, upon starting, we are greeted by Gene Kerman, the flight director and the guide for this quick introduction. OK, what he's basically saying is this is the Kerbal Space Center. This is his playground. Now, you can adjust the camera by holding the middle button and dragging the mouse or right-clicking for rotation. Each of these buildings, you'll see some of them get highlighted as you move the mouse over them. There's a bunch of different buildings that do different things here. And there's only two buildings I'm going to show you initially, right? Uh, right-clicking on the building brings up the description. And the two that we want to look at are the vehicle assembly building and the mission control. So the goal of career mode, or one of the possible goals of career mode, is to get all the science so that you can get all the all the parts unlocked by the R&D department. And uh, to do that, you're going to need money. And to get money, you're going to do contracts. So contracts are available from Mission Control here. So we'll left click on it. And we have Gene Kerman once again saying hi. You know, some people actually miss that Mission Control is there because it is a very small building and it's hidden behind the Vehicle Assembly building. But it's the first place you should go because that's where you're going to get your money. Now, there's two missions you should accept. One is to launch our first vessel. All you need to do is launch your first vessel. Well, let's do that. The second is to gather scientific data from Kerbin. And it very, quickly, it very specifically says, give us a quick crew report before launching. So... That's what we'll do. We'll give them a quick crew report and then launch. And we should be able to do both contracts with one rocket. So we're going to go into the vehicle assembly building, which is this giant building in the middle. And it is far too impressive for what we're going to build. Now, on the in the vehicle assembly building, we get greeted by Werner von Kerman, who knows all about building rockets and uh, storied um, you know, dubious pasts. So you can read through that if you like, but this screen is where you're going to do all your constructing. We have a bunch of tools on the left, which will consist of parts. You have a cost information, center of mass and all that. You have icons up here for loading and saving and launching. Uh, there's some options here for changing your crew and some information down here. So this is the engineer's report, the contracts we have available and your current set of messages. So. How do we start building? Well, we have to start by selecting a part and every rocket needs a command pod or a probe body. So 
mouse over the Mark 1 command pod, it will give you a humorous description and some numbers about it. But then you're going to left click and it will appear in your rocket building space here. As everyone on the ground appears rather unimpressed by the whole thing, they just go around their business despite a capsule being suspended in the air. Now, the mission said that we need to be able to launch it, so we need, we need a booster and the only one we have is this RT5 flea solid rocket booster which is considered by some to be little more than a trash bin full of boom. So that is an engine which burns solid fuel and it burns it very very quickly <laughs> and uh, you can't turn it off. So to land it, after that turns off, you're going to be flying through the air with the greatest of ease. And to land it, you're going to need the help from a parachute. So if you look in the tabs here, Utility has a Mark 16 parachute. So pick that up with the left button, drag it over, and then pop it on the front there. See, the green dots are how the things hook together. See that? Bingo. That's our first vehicle. We're almost ready to go. There's just one more thing we need to do. See down in the le uh, bottom right here? This is our staging diagram and it shows what happens when we hit the space bar. What's going to happen is our engine is going to fire and our parachute is going to open and these things will fight it out and you will spin around and it will be truly comical and you will probably do it many times while playing Kerbal Space Program. But you want to fix this. I'll also note that the engineer's report will actually warn you that the parachute is on the first stage. It will activate in the first staging group and the parachute will activate at the same time as an engine. That's not good. It also says there's an unused monopropellant resource, which you don't need to worry about unless you're being like hardcore. So what you want to do is make these things activate on separate stages. So I've clicked the plus sign to add a stage one here. And now you pick this up and drag it down and now stage one is going to have the engine and stage two, uh, the stage zero, because we're counting down obviously, will have the parachute. So let's uh, launch this. Now the space program has picked the first pilot for us automatically. It is Jebediah Kerman, Thrillmaster extraordinaire. And we're going to have to ask him to do some science first, right? So to do science, you have to right click on a part which produces science and a capsule produces science because it has a crew member inside so you can ask the pilot for a crew report so you right click it brings up the menu there is the crew report left click on that and it tells you that you've recorded the crew's assessment of the situation so this is a crew report from launchpad and i'll go into the detail on what's really going on here later but we've collected the science that is required by contract number one contract number two is going to require us to fly so let's keep that data here by clicking on the green clipboard and to actually fly we just press space and off we go look at us fly look at our speed down here look at our altitude here this is our vertical speed and up here in the top right these are contracts being fulfilled. These are messages coming in saying, you've learned something, you've done something. Let's click at these just to see. We completed our contract. We launched our first vessel. And in, re in return, we're going to get 5,321 funds. We're going to get one science and we're going to get two reputation. Let's throw that one away. We set a speed record of 150 meters per second. We set a speed limit of 300 meters per second, which is almost the speed of sound. And then we set a speed record of 450 meters per second, which is faster than the speed of sound. And we set an altitude record of 3,500 meters. Okay. Let's close this. There we go. We are now falling back towards the surface. So remember that parachute? We want to deploy that parachute. How do we deploy that parachute? It's in the staging diagram, right? We just need to hit space. So I do that. There it comes out, partially deployed. And we get jerked back into a, a reasonable orientation rather than going nose first. Notice that Jebediah is completely happy with this the whole time. So 
We're now falling at about 35 meters per second. That means it's going to take us about 40 seconds to get back to the surface. We can speed this up. In the top left, we have the warp menu here. So you can click on these to go at two times regular speed, three times, four times regular speed. As we get below 500 meters, the parachute will open properly and our speed will get dropped down to about five or six meters per second. You can see the shadow as we get close to the ground. It's very good to do things at day and during the day so you can see the shadow. There we go, we've landed and we've completed uh, that first mission. So to complete the mission properly, we need to recover it. So let's mouse over the, the bar at the top and we get recover vessel. Now we recovered the vessel and we get information. It tells us that we got experiments we recovered. So just by flying a spacecraft, we actually got five science. By doing a crew report from the launch pad, we got one and a half science. So that's six and a half from this. We also got science from actually just doing this contract here. So if I click on this, oh, wait a second, let's go through. Uh, we get money back for recovering all these parts, right? So that's important. And Jebediah Kerman got experience. And because of this uh, crew member flying, we got some reputation as well, which is all good. So yeah, if I click on this, it said that we also got the scientific data gathering contract. That means we have 10 science. So let's throw that away. Okay. So this is, this is the score up the top. We have funds, 146,000. We have uh, reputation, which is good. If it was going bad, that would be a problem. If Jebediah had died, we might have come away with negative reputation. And we have science. So now, let's go and spend that science. So to spend science, you're going to go to this large complex at the bottom. This is the re research and development facility. So let's enter it. The research and development facility basically gives you a giant tech tree to unlock items. You can look all the way down to see the amazing things that technology will bring you. Eventually you will have things like the rapier engine, which is the Kerbal version of the Sabre engine. You will have little uh, radio thermal nucle nuclear generators, you'll have large probe cores and you know, ways of of uh, harvesting fuel, but we're down at this end of the tree. We all have these five parts available to us. If we want to get the parts from basic rocketry, we click on the node and it says research for five science. So I can spend five science and now I have that node and it has unlocked further nodes. This is just like a tech tree. You know how this works. You've seen this in a million other games. It's a good idea to unlock both of these nodes because they give you a whole bunch of different features which are all very useful. Also here, you have the science archives that show you where you have been getting your science from. Uh, this will matter more later on as you go to different locations because you can only do one experiment in each location. There's a limit of how much science you can get from each place. For example, there's a limit of how much science you can get from the launch pad. Okay, so that's the end of part one. In part two, we will look at liquid-fueled engines and we will go higher and further. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.